Hello, welcome to another video on the Amateur Machine Shop channel. Before I can begin machining, I have to address an issue with the mini lathe. Sparks were flying and the motor grunting. Some investigation revealed that one of the brushes wasn't making complete contact. Further inspection showed that the spring on the brush had broken into two pieces and resulted in the brush having no spring pressure against the armature of the motor. Having no success finding brushes locally, I filed the brush ends flat and coiled the broken spring enough so that it would apply pressure to the armature. It worked. I found similar brushes on Amazon and waited the two weeks for them to arrive. Brush pairs were about $2 a set, so $20 for the package. I may now have a lifetime supply of brushes. Let's get started with turning the flywheel. The flywheel is made of brass and is 50mm in diameter. There are six 8mm holes that are merely decorative. One side is recessed deeper than the other. A 5mm hole is bored in the center. I have the parts all drawn in Fusion 360 to reference as I need. Weeks ago, I mounted a 6 inch caliper as my DRO to help with turning lengths. It has proved to be very convenient to be able to set a zero or turn to a desired length. As with any lathe chuck, the chips and debris slowly get into the scroll plate and the jaw teeth. It is a good idea to frequently clear any chips or debris using compressed air. In this instance, I'm swapping the jaws to better hold a larger diameter workpiece. I do not show the details here, but most chucks have markings to indicate which jaw goes where as they have to be installed in sequence, one, two, three. I start with the marking for the number one jaw, then rotate clockwise, add number two, and then finally the third jaw. It makes a person a little anxious when working with material that is rather costly. I still wonder if a piece of flat stock wouldn't have been cheaper than the supplier cutting from a round shaft. Be aware, I've increased the speed of the machining video segments 5-6 to six times to shorten the video. I started with 1.5 hours of video and edited it down to about 17 minutes. In the next few turning operations, the part is face, center drilled and drilled. The flywheel is turned around in the chuck and the other face is turned to the correct overall thickness. Then the 5mm borehole for the crankshaft is machined.
I chose to bore the hole rather than just drill with a 5mm drill bit. I do not have a 5mm reamer and I wanted the flywheel to have a tight fit on the crankshaft to reduce any chance of wobbling. Seeing videos of engines running and the flywheel that spins off center isn't very appealing. In this machining operation, I turn the shallower recessed area using the same tool I made to machine the fins on the stainless steel cylinder in the previous video. Since I started working with brass, I've been keeping all the swarf and chips that are produced. The lathe and mill are cleaned completely so that the clean brass can be collected. I am saving it for heat blowing steel parts in the future.
I cannot believe that happened, but it did. I hadn't moved the carriage far enough away and too quickly cranked the cross slide and cut into the flywheel. I was about to churn for the inside diameter. I touched the part with the tool bit and the chuck stopped. The motor belt had ripped. Of all the things to go wrong and already frustrated from previously running the bit into the part. Started searching for a replacement belt and I settled with littlemachineshop.com. Belts are only $10 each and $20 shipping, so I ordered two belts. That way there is never downtime waiting for belts in the future. Why is it three months later? Please visit the description to understand the personal struggles we are dealing with. Now that I'm able to continue, the diameter is brought to 50mm and the edge is chamfered on both sides of the outside diameter. The recess is just large enough to allow the jaws to grab the flange area from the inside. For a long while I've been thinking about how I will drill six holes equally spaced without the use of a dividing head. It dawned on me that I could use a hex shaft and index the flywheel against a fixed point. Off camera I prepped a 1 inch hex shaft with a 10mm bore and 1024 UNC tapped hole to secure the flywheel. To find the exact center of the flywheel I'm using a dial indicator and something one of my previous bosses called swing indicate. It can be tedious and much easier on a CNC. I wanted to ensure that all six holes were as close to the center as possible. For the X, I used an edge finder and moved the required distance, then set a hard stop to reference the flywheel after each index is made. The spindle is being turned by hand using the pulley mounted to the spindle above the machine. I own two dial indicators, a Fowler brand and an Interrapid. They look identical and perform much the same, but the Interrapid costs twice as much as the Fowler brand, and there is a reason. Years ago a salesman told me that the Fowler indicators were built with the same precision as a Swiss made Interrapid. The trouble was, every time I used the Fowler to swing indicator center, I was 8 thou off center. I finally realized that the Fowler indicator was at fault and now only use it for straight line indicating. Moral of the story, don't believe every salesperson. Now, let's drill the six holes. As you will see shortly, I should have drilled the holes through the flywheel while it was held in the vise. My intention was to drill all the holes through after on the drill press, as I thought it would be easy.
My lapse of judgment with drilling the holes could have caused personal injury. Although brass is soft, it tends to bite into the tool bit or drill bit, especially at the breakthrough point of the hole. The breakthrough of a hole using a drill bit often causes the last bit of material to grab the drill. Despite years of experience, I should have known better and watched for this. Anyway, I ended up using a chain vice grip to secure the flywheel and finish the holes. Due to the flywheel being thrown from the drill press, I will have to take a few light cuts on the lathe to all the damaged surfaces to bring back the nice machined appearance. All the holes were chamfered by hand and I will address the surface cleanup and polishing at a later date. One thing missing is a 3mm set screw hole to mount the flywheel to the crankshaft. I may have a set screw that is small enough that I can steal from my 3D printer projects. Despite the machining error and the drill press incident, the flywheel turned out well. I can address the damaged areas with minimal effort. I would like to thank all the new subscribers that have chosen to subscribe to my channel. During the three months between creating the flywheel, I improved my camera setup. No more camera shaking. Working on a video to showcase what I created to no longer need a camera crane or a tripod. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I would also appreciate your comments. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.